Clay, I think this is starting calendar year 15 for you in the UFC, man. I mean, to hear that, does that sound insane even to you, the 15 years in the, in the top organization in the sport? Absolutely, man. Uh, we're super blessed for our longevity in the sport and, um, you know, our health, our durability, the camps we've had, um, the fights we've put on, the opponents we've faced, um, all the fans, all the support, all the blessings that we've had. And uh, like I always say, it, man, the best is yet to come. That's amazing. Do you have anything you can credit your longevity to? Because it's not exactly like you have a fight safe kind of style, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling. It always comes back to wrestling, you know, starting on the mat when I was six, seven years old and just that mentality, that mindset of uh, never take no for an answer. Never say die. You know what I mean? As much as I get beat up in the practice room, you know, starting at six to now I just turned 39 a month ago. I still get my butt kicked in there, but I still feel I still feel like I can compete at the highest level with these guys, with these young bucks. And um, man, if I can keep up with the the guys at Team Alpha Male and Ultimate Fitness, I can keep up with uh, you know with anybody in the UFC and the lightweight division. Yeah, you talked about running with the young bucks, but here you get a fellow vet, right? I mean, yep. uh, you know, he's been around for like 11 years in the UFC. So mm -hmm. when they gave you this name, was that kind of exciting to, to fight another kind of OG that I'm sure you've seen you know over the years? Absolutely, man. You name it, uh, Michael Johnson and myself, we fought the who's who. He's fought uh, some some world champions. He's you know he's beaten some guys. He's fought guys that have been in the title shot, title picture. He's been in the title picture. Um, so it was just a matter of time before we got in there together. And um, man, come Saturday, it's going to be fireworks. You got two guys, you know, he's an explosive dynamic striker. He's got good footwork, speed, power. And uh, we got a guy like me, we just uh, we throw caution in the wind and we go out there, balls to the wall. So. Yeah. Is it crazy that you guys haven't fought? I remember when they announced this, I, in my head, I was like, surely they fought before at some point. <laughs> That's what everyone was saying, too. They're like, didn't you guys fight before? How have you guys not ran into each other? Uh, it was just a matter of time before we crossed paths. And uh, man, I can't wait till it gets. Uh, Till it's go time till we do that walk. Yeah, is there anything kind of cool being on a card? You know, you got like Overeem, you got Frankie Edgar. You know, it's like I don't know. It feels like all the OGs are coming together right For now. For sure, I feel like this is kind of an overlooked card, like the unspoken card. And you look, you go down the list, and it's the who's who, man. So we're blessed to be on it. And um, man, wherever we're at on the card, I know uh, we're going to put on a, an exciting fight for everybody. And um, it's man, it's going to be outstanding. What drives you at this point, man? You've been doing this for so long. Like you've you've been around for so long. Like what? What gets you into the gym on a daily basis and, and, and keeps you, you know, chasing after this? The, the thought that I get to compete at the highest level in the number one promotion in the world and in a sport that people never thought I was going to be able to uh, compete in or have, find success in. You know, it's just been my love for uh, sports at a young age and being a professional athlete. I remember, man, saying to myself when I was cutting the grass, we used to, you know, have the old push mower. I used to cut, you know, we had an acre and I was like, man, there's something I'm going to be good at. I don't know what it is. I loved baseball. I was always on the all-star teams. Football, we was, you know, was always starting linebacker and I would tackle the dudes even without the ball just because I love to hit people, but I was always too small to, you know, get that next level and wrestling. I was never good at it, but I just was always, you know, um, the starter. I just, I knew there was something I was going to do. I said, one day I'm going to be on ESPN. I don't know what it's going to be and um, what it's going to be in, but uh, man, look at, uh, some here 15 years later in the UFC, I think I've been fighting professionally for 16 years. So um, it's just the love of competition, man. It, the adrenaline, that walk out, the fight, being around the, the camaraderie, your team, your coaches, the journey, the path. It's, uh, man, it gets better every time. And um, like I said, to be able to have, uh, you know, our health and uh, just keep doing this, you know, on our terms. I love fighting on my terms. That's what drives me still. Yeah, you mentioned, you said, hey, the best is yet to come. Have you started to think about the end, like how long you can keep doing this, like how long you want to keep doing it? Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, it's one of those things, that, you know, I don't put a ceiling on it. I don't put a number on it, you know. Um, I don't want to say, you know, we signed a four-fight deal. I don't want to say that's it, my, my four fights, or, or I want to stop fighting when I'm 40 or something like that because I feel like a lot of times when people do put a number on when they want to be done competing, maybe they hit a ceiling before then. Maybe they don't really reach that number, you know what I mean? So I don't want to limit myself. And I'll be the first one to say, when I'm done having fun, I'm going to hang up the gloves and uh, I'm going to pick up a fishing rod, be on a fishing boat forever. Nice. Last thing for me, I, 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 on paper, this thing looked like it's going to be fireworks. I mean, bottom line, is that the way you see? Is this, is this you know, 15 minutes, fight of the night, crazy type stuff? Without a doubt. Um, that's what the fans expect. That's what they're going to get. And I know Michael, Michael Johnson is going to bring his A game. And uh, we're both coming off a couple of tough losses, man. And we got a lot to prove in there. Um, we want to let people know that we are still – uh, a force to be reckoned with and uh, come Saturday night man the, the world's gonna find out that we still got a lot left in the gas tank speaking of 
you know, being active and all the other things. Looking back in like 2019, you, you were able to throw in some grappling bouts, you know, as well <laughs> as doing some of this. Is that something, I mean, well, one, how busy do you hope to be in 2021? Is, and is that something that you want to do as well as get in and then fight in the cage? Are you hoping to get some grappling matches in there as well? I tell you, that's a very funny question. Uh, it's a good question. That was my first time I ever grappled competitively and figures it was against the multiple time world champ, uh, Roger Gracie. <laughs> uh, yeah, or I'm sorry, Gregor Gracie, I apologize. Yeah, um, yeah went against him. Um, so it was an honor to be able to take, you know, take on a Gracie. It was just like, I couldn't believe I was going out against them. And then the next one was against Renato Babalu Sobral, who's about as big as my brother, and everyone knows Big J, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm surprised he didn't break like six of my ribs. Um, so it was definitely a cool competition. I love doing stuff like that. I would love to, uh, to be able to compete in some more grappling tournaments. Um, I hope they, you know, they have some more. I'm not sure how active they are right now, but that would be definitely something. That's always going to be something down the road. You know, the the, the jujitsu game is something you don't lose. You know, what I mean, like wrestling. Obviously, I can't compete. You know, in wrestling anymore. You know, competitively, but jujitsu, it's it's in our blood, man. It's just like you know, competition. We want to, we feed off of it. So definitely, that's uh, something I look forward to. And I can see where, as as fighters, as as you've been doing it over and over and over, it takes longer to recover after fights and all that sort of stuff. But looking at, at 2021, if you, what's the number uh, in your head that you're like, how many times you would like to see yourself competing? Three times. I want to get back on the horse again. I want to stay as active as I've ever been. And it's been a while, you know, since I've been able to have three fights in a year. And um, that's what we did when we first got in the UFC. The first few years, man, we had three fights, you know, throughout the years, um, throughout, you know, each calendar year. And I, I would really, really love to uh, see myself staying, you know, um, staying active and uh, just keep fighting the, the best guys out there. There was a video that the UFC released the other day. It was a little Twitter one. It was a highlights of you. Did you did you go and take a peek at that? And it showed you. It started right off the bat. It had a little teaser view and uh, Diego stare, Sanchez the and they're down. just yeah. throwing down in the middle. <laughs> when you watch stuff like that, what what do you think? Do you ever look at it and you're like, oh, I can't believe I did that, or is that like, man, that was awesome? I mean, when you watch stuff like that, your highlights over your career. What are your thoughts when you when you look back at those? I mean, because you're looking back with 2020 vision, you know, oh, maybe I would have did this better. Maybe I would do this different. But when you watch those highlights, what goes through your heads? Yeah, you I really want to thank the UFC for putting on that uh, that collaboration, that video. Uh, it definitely raised a lot of buzz in the MMA world, and uh, it sparked something to me again. You know, people, they ask, you know, when's that, that old school carpenter coming back out again? The hammer, you know what I mean? And uh, he's always in here. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of time. Uh, you know, we just got to push that button, land the gas pedal like we always do. So, um, yeah, what I would have done differently in that fight is not backed up to the cage immediately when Diego came rushing at me. And uh, that was, uh, I guess, the start of fight of the year that year. So, um, but yeah, there's definitely, uh, there's a lot left in this gas tank, man. We got a reserve tank set on full. And, and lastly, you talk about afterwards, you're going to do a lot of fishing, but are we also going to maybe see some coaching at, at Team Alpha Male? Is that something that you're hoping to maybe transition afterwards? Are we going to see uh, Coach Guida in there uh, helping to foster the next generation? Um, I, you know, I, we got some of the best coaches in the world over there at Team Alpha Male right now. We got uh, such a good stable of fighters. We get to learn from some of the best guys, you know, starting with the general himself, Uri Faber, and, uh, you know, going down the line. Uh, Danny Lascal Castillo, longtime UFC veteran. Uh, Coach Joey Rodriguez, they're, uh, Joey Rodriguez, they're in the, the uh, building with us here today and um, you know Mikey Malott, uh, coach Chris Holdsworth, um, Andre Feely is becoming one of those guys who's just a student of the game and he just passes on the knowledge so well it's amazing to see him study and pass on while he's still highly highly competitive so um, coaching wrestling is one of my passions I've been coaching for about a decade you know in the youth and um, high school level so I see that's um, you know my sights more you know in a wrestling room and um, I'll always be a fight fan, you know what I mean? But uh, I love watching these kids, these young kids develop, you know, in wrestling and then see them go on to mix martial arts. That's my passion. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. You, you've been in the game so long. Memories of Strike Force to be seen. Uh, remember, your brother used to come to the ring with you. I, one of the memories I have of you guys hit, slapping you in the face and everything, <laughs> you all charged up. What kind of discussions do you have with your brother now about the, you know, still being in the game after all this time? Well, I can um, thank my brother for all the success I've had, you know, in the sport. I can attest this to him because it all, it's, it all started, you know, because of him way, way back in the day. He was started uh, when I was working on a fishing boat out in Alaska. He was fighting at the Boot Scootin' Bingo Hall in, uh, in Indiana for Chaz Bowling. Remember, you guys remember Chaz? And then, like, Total Fight Challenge, Hook and Shoot, um, 
what there's iron heart crown we're talking the old school midwest ones you know what i mean so he's the one that got our start with uh you know joey gilbert and gilbert grappling and um so it's definitely you know my brother started it off man and uh, without him i wouldn't be here today and so we just got to look back now we laugh at some of the, the, the stories we had the travels you know he's fought in poland he's fought in finland he fought all over the world he fought bobby lashley he fought uh travis view multiple times jeremy horn you name it i remember when he was on the ultimate fighter in one of his interviews, he said he'd fight Chuck Liddell for 50 bucks in a 30-pack of old style. I was like, oh, my gosh, dude, what are you talking about, Jay? But that's just how he was, man. You know what I mean? That's where I think we get the nitty-gritty toughness from him and my old man, my dad. And uh, just, uh, you know, blue-collar dudes going out there doing what they love, not for the money. Yeah, it's nice to, you know, make a living off of it and have financial freedom because of it. But we got into the sport because, you know, of wrestling. We got into the sport because we love to go out there and compete. We love to just get our hands on dudes and just throw them around. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I owe it all to my brother, and uh, he's on a, pl a plane right out, uh, out here right now, and he's super pumped to be in Vegas and to see that his little brother is still um, able to compete at the highest level. And um, I love having him in my corner. And um, yeah, like I said, it all started with him and on a wrestling mat a long time ago. And you said you had a lot left in the gas tank still. And so is it just, are you, are you looking for the accolades of the belt, or is it just that competition that, that driving you yeah you know what it, it, it's a couple things man um yeah the competition drives me more than anything and there's a couple things i still want to accomplish i want to be the dude in the lightweight division or in the all the ufc that either has the most fights at the end of his career the most ufc fights ever um and the most takedowns ever in the ufc and i think right now we're in the top five list of takedowns and um to me that means a lot being a a kid that never excelled in wrestling you know what i mean being from a junior college and um was always kind of right there a little bit and uh I think there's a lot to be said for that, that uh, sometimes hard work, you know, outworks talent when talent doesn't work hard. So having a lot of takedowns in the UFC, having that record would be, uh, would be pretty cool for me. But we'll be counting. All right. You're going to get a few. You'll be counting again Saturday night then. <laughs>